How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and welcome back to our playthrough of Fall From Heaven 2, the high fantasy mod for Civilization 4. Today we're going to be continuing the Black Tower scenario. Wow, I actually got the name of it right this time. And we have one objective left and that is apparently here to remove the Tiberian uh, civilization from the game. Just one, just one last civilization and then we've won the scenario. So let's get started. We have... A whole bunch of the host units here from our previous conquest of that civilization that existed on this island. I'm just going to delete all that stuff and let's see if we can't go ahead and sail over to Tiberian's land here quickly. Interestingly enough, this is Infernal Land now, so I'm not exactly sure if Tiberian lost some of his cities to Hyborum. I know. When Hyborm originally spawns, he can take over your cities, but I thought, like, Hyborm started over here, so I'm not exactly sure how he ended up with Tiberian's city here, because you can see, uh, it used to be Tiberian's land. It's a Shiam land right there, so I'm not exactly sure how that changed hands, because they're not at war, obviously. So that's the really interesting part about this. Astrologers report that the bow has moved into prominence. The constellation is sacred to Amantheum, and your governors report an increase in their city's birth rates. You can get one great profit. Ooh. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get that great profit then. No point in not getting it. Let's see here. Fell. Oh, that's Guybrush. Where is our other hero? Because he might need some healing as well. That's a mage. Not seeing it. Is this him? Yeah, Donald Lou. This is the unit I was looking for. Let's go ahead and heal that one. Uh, Stefaner can just go ahead and fortify there. We don't have enough great uh, great people though to start another golden age. It says it will consume four. Wow, I'm surprised I have so many great people sitting around already. It says I need one more. Yeah, these are all High Borms units. Let's see if we can get a mage here to cast a floating eyeball. So that way we can take a peek to see what's hang hanging wow. Hanging around out there. Apparently all my units can now cast the what the empty beer? What what is an empty beer? I don't know. We don't really care. At this point, it's just a waste of time. Okay, so here we can see a little bit more what's going on. Yes, uh, Tiberian is going to have the Ideolons, which of course is going to make this difficult. He has a lot of units here. Maybe we can take out some of the other ones. How many Ideolons does he have in the city? Just one. So that'll make it easier. Uh, the other city that we attacked, it did have four Ideolons in it, which was part of the reason why it was so difficult to take out because like we have to damage all of them and kill them before we could actually send in the host because they're just too the ideolons are just too powerful otherwise they they don't stand up to the hosts too well or the hosts don't stand up to them so well I should say and also I mean at least we can get within striking distance from the water here and I'm pretty sure we don't have to take out Hyborum so as long as he leaves us alone in that city I don't see any reason why I should uh feel compelled to attack it. What happened? Wait. Can I not? Oh yeah, here we go. We still do have the eyeball. Nice. So it gives you a better idea of what he has out here. Uh, let's go ahead and sail right in. I'm thinking... Could land right here next to the city with our units. It remains to be seen though. First thing we want to do is bring out some fireballs. Okay, the fortifications have been bombarded down. He apparently didn't build any walls there. So let's next use the maelstrom. At least three of them. That one does not have the ability to cast a Maelstrom. There's our third third one. 
Ideolons are down to 10 strength now, which means we should be able to attack with Sefner and win. We can also do Cast Heal. No, that's not necessary. 99.8. Yeah, there we go. Ideolon is down. Does uh, Felmar have the Amphibious promotion at this point? Yes, he does. I think Donalu also does. So maybe I should use Donalu first. Yeah. Okay. Heal up Donalu a little bit there. His odds are 99.9, .9, which is pretty good. So what else could we do here? Let's grab all these fireballs. Move them one tile there. And then I think we want to attack with them. My fireball did destroy one archer. I'm not sure if my ships took more damage though. It's a little bit difficult to tell. Okay, we're gonna sell the ships in one more tile here. And... I think I'm gonna attack... Oh, if I attack with him though, the pyro zombie will cause me collateral damage, okay. Instead, what I'm going to do here is unload the mages that we need to use. Okay, this, these are all mages. Also bring out the arch mages. We want to keep our heroes in the ships though. So that's all we're going to bring out. Let's cast haste. All the mages should bring in hosts. And then get back on the ship. Adepts back on the ship. And we're going to use... We're going to summon wraiths, I think, with our archmages. And now let's back out here a bit. So what are the odds with the wraith? 95.7, and the host is 56.6. At least that host was. This one might be a little bit better here. This one is 79. Yeah, so the wraiths are actually pretty decent, even though they do have a... A negative in that they don't have their full strength against units like pyro zombies. Wow, that all my units there took some pretty significant damage from that pyro zombie. Seventy-two percent, ninety-nine point five percent, no sixty-four percent. Not the hottest odds here. Destroying a couple of mages there. That's pretty good. Let's see. Wow. In one turn, we've taken out an entire city of his. Let me examine the cities first, see what he has in here. He's got an academy. But other than that, there's nothing important in there. Okay, let's have these units move towards this stack over here. Yeah, so next turn, I'm not sure if we can take out his capital. He has a dragon in there, which could be a little bit difficult. And I'd also like to find out where his other cities are, because it seems to me he has at least one more city. So let's skip a turn here with the ships and see what the next turn brings. Apparently he hit me with some fireballs. A Shiam fireball? Yeah. I'm surprised he has that kind of range. Okay. Build a theater there. No problem. Yeah, so fireballs are something we have to be careful about here. There's not a whole lot we can do about it because obviously uh, there's not a whole lot of maneuvering room down around in these, this area here. Let's see, does, uh, yes, Sefner needs to be healed. So, wait, we can't use that healing thing? No, we can't. Sanctify, removes hell terrain from surrounding tiles or removes a city runes and reduces... What? No. City runes and reduces the Armageddon counter. The Armageddon counter is disabled for this map, so that's not going to be a problem. But that's definitely an option for more open-ended games. So at the moment, I'm looking for a floating eyeball here. So I want to find out where his other city is. It seems to me he does have at least one more. And this is the problem with mages, is you really can't tell what promotions they have. 
and, and they're such divergent units, right? They almost need to have different icons for when they become different units. Okay, this city's going to be a bit harder to take out. There aren't many units in it, but it's on a hill, and it's landlocked, which means like if we landed from this side, uh, let's say we landed from the north, we couldn't even hit it in one turn then. But fortunately, like I said, there aren't many units there. Okay, so it looks like it's just his capital left here. He doesn't appear to have many more cities. I mean, I can't talk to him to find out how many cities he has, but just by the looks of it, he doesn't appear to have many. So, and once again, it's only 30% defense on the city itself. What I'm planning to do here, I'm bringing the fireballs. The bombard the defenses down. I suppose I shouldn't have moved them yet, because now when I cast uh, Maelstrom, hmm. When I cast Maelstrom, now I'll damage my fireballs. So I suppose I should throw them in first. And then we'll go ahead and cast the Maelstroms. Because otherwise I'm just weakening my own units there. I think they have the most potential right now at this point. Okay, the Ideolon is down to 10.5. Sefner can't automatically be healed. He has 99.2% odds here. I'm surprised he doesn't use the... He doesn't go up against the dragon. Like, the Ideolon is only half the strength, and it's the one that's chosen to defend there for uh, or against my attacks i'm just a little bit surprised by that let's get the uh host moving here i'm gonna have try to have these hosts take out some of these units that are stationed around the city here so 99.9 there we go All right, so we've cleared all those out. There are quite a few long bowmen in this city here. I'm thinking also some diseased corpses, which will deal damage to our units when we attack them. To get rid of the Ideolon, we need to sail up here. 99.2, let's try that. Yeah, the dragon is going to be really strong. Like even with Donalu, let's heal Donalu here. Oh wait, he shows up as attacking against... Really? So the, the dragon does not have much opportunity to defend. To defend. Like most of the units that are being brought up as an option are, are facing off against different units. Okay. With that in mind... Hmm. Let's... It, it's hard to say. Yeah, let's get all the mages out of the ships. What kind of tile is this? It's just a plain gra uh, plains, I guess. It's broken lands. I forgot what the equivalent of that was. Let's go ahead and get the every everything out. Mages. All that stuff. This adept. And then as per usual, I'm going to use them all to summon. Before getting back on the ship. And then I think... Hmm, should we sail first? I think we should sail one tile away. Okay, we can't move again this turn. So that prevents us from using our heroes. If the situation arises that we'd want to. Okay, so let's see what the odds are here. 50% against a longbow. I wonder why that longbow is so good. It doesn't really even have that many promotions. Oh, I, I don't think we were going up against longbows before. So that one Wraith one. Only 32% odds there. 11.7? Really? Hmm. We definitely don't have the hottest odds here. Oops. No, that, that one is still... Ready to attack. 0.2% odds. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we should wait, huh? 
This city might take a while to whittle down if they don't want to put me up against the dragon right away. So I think instead, what maybe we can do here is pillage. Oh no, the host cannot pillage, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't see any reason to attack the dragon. I'm just going to make it stronger, so... I'm going to wait and see if I can whittle away at that city using something else. Because there are other options here. We have a whole stack of units over here we can destroy. And we, then we can also pillage his land to make it harder for him to rebuild units. So we'll see where that goes. Wow, he's just got like fireballs all over the place. Hopefully my ships can't die from them. I think they could though. Interestingly enough. So, one of the things we might want to consider doing here is where's that dragon again? Did he pull the dragon out? No, the black dragon is still there. But it's not going to present the black dragon to me as a viable attack target. Except on very freak occasions, which is going to hold me back here. Like, I bet if I promoted against the archer here, they would set me up against the dragon then. So, what I can do... Uh, no, I already have all the city attack promotions, huh? City Raider 1. What do I need to get additional City Raider promotions? Wait. Why is everything dark? When I do this... Okay. That was weird. Last time the background turned dark behind it. So City Raider... Uh, that would go under the category of promotions. I'm just curious, like, what does City Raider 2 require? Uh, require City Raider 1. It's only available to melee animal units and beast units. I guess... Is, is an angel a beast unit? I guess not. I know it's not a melee unit. What is it? The, it's called Sefner? Yeah, it's not listed here. So Sefner is not a beast unit. I mean, I didn't think it would be, but who knows. So we could do a heal while moving. Which gives us a little bit more flexibility. We could increase movement range. 40 versus undead. The problem with that is we really don't do a lot against undead units inquisition mounted units one first strike chance us against archer units is just a lot of this stuff is unnecessary because he is really strong so let's do heal while moving I guess because that way he'll be able to heal every turn after he attacks hmm and then what about okay Donalu is fully healed Arcane Barge took some damage there. Let's go ahead and heal up Guybrush. He's almost at full strength now. And... Okay, we have a nice little stack here to try to take out. With our host. I'm gonna keep promoting these as I go, th go along. Any of these other ones have promotions? This one has a combat 2. Okay, we're going to save the combat 2 host. Longbowman is almost at full strength there. Problem is if I use my Maelstrom, I'll actually start damaging my hosts here. Oh wait, this one can move more. Okay. We might as well move it then. And then there is also this big stack here. Which is mostly a diseased corpse. What else? There's also some mages there. Diseased corpse seems to be the majority of it, though. So let's promote for melee. And what are the odds? 77%. It yeah, can only move one tile. Uh, we could attack the skeleton for guaranteed odds. Or guaranteed victory. 0.1% odds there. Let's hit that adept instead. I think it was an adept. It says it's a savant. Uh, that might be the evil equivalent of an adept. So, what else can we do with this stuff here? We can't quite reach any enemies, I don't think. In one turn. Ooh, we can actually attack this city in one turn? There's just an imp holding it down. 95% odds. Why not? Maybe we should take out some of Highborn's cities here. Ah, uh, hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, because he hardly has any units defending them. It would be pretty easy to take out, when you think about it. And that will give Sefner an opportunity to heal, I suppose. Hmm. One of the things we can do 
Let's bring in the fireballs. Use them for collateral damage. Didn't do that much damage, honestly. What are Stefaner's odds against longbows? 99.7. Okay, we'll sail in one tile here. Just attack those. I guess we're gonna whittle away at his defenses slowly then. Dunalu has the same odds, 99.9 .9 there. And same thing here with Falamar. Okay, now the dragon comes out. How far can we go? We can't get there in one turn. Okay, so we might just... Hmm. But it depends upon how many... Oh, this is another Civilization 3 song. It depends upon how many tiles our hosts can move. It also depends upon what units he has in this city. Oh, he didn't have many units in it, did he? Yeah, so... Well, one of the things then we could... If we have... If we have units that can move three tiles, one, two, three, we could attack that turn. Uh, attack Hyborm City. So I'm going to move the mages, as well as the arch mages. And where's my adept? Here we go. So I'm hoping I can take out his city in one turn. Because he's barely defended it at all. And the same thing for the Archmages. Bring in the Wraiths. There we go. Or Wraiths are actually... Yeah, they are Wraiths. Okay. What are the odds? There we go. 99.5. This one doesn't can't move far enough this turn. Same thing with this host. Skip turn. Oops. Did not mean to skip that second one's turn. That one. Okay, we did. Yeah, so many of these are only two movement. But this one isn't. So we'll be able to attack with that one. This one has to skip a turn. This one has to skip a turn. This one has to skip a turn. Apparently we don't have enough. Yeah, that really sucks. Okay, this one can attack though. There we go. Another city down. We have two of the hosts left. Huh. I didn't think I would die attacking that. Oh well. Let's let's see here. There's just an imp, a skeleton, and some mains defending that city. Well, let's pull the ships out of here. So hopefully we don't take any excessive fireball damage. And skip a turn. We'll see what next turn brings. Like we do have a stack of Tiberians to take care of yet as well. The arcane barges kill the Shium fireball. Yeah, he's still after me with the fireballs. It's pretty incredible, really. Looks like a lot of our units here died. Or they, they might have just disappeared because of time limitations. Yeah, okay, that one that was not the hottest of odds. That one won. Okay, both of those units won. What do we have over here? City attack, maybe? 66.7 odds against that city. So, he's currently using archers to defend this city. Like, the black dragon doesn't come out very frequently. Oh, and it also can't move, so there's no chance that we can take the city without killing the black dragon. Hmm. Let's... Let's get rid of these hosts here. Same thing with this one. I guess we're just gonna go in here and do some damage again with the Maelstrom. Wait, that's still damaging my unit here? I might just might as well throw it against the city then. Okay, now the Black Dragon is showing up. Apparently it can't be damaged by Maelstroms. Interesting. Fortunately, though, it doesn't have any promotions. So what are the odds with Sefner against it? 99.2? Ooh, okay. Sounds like we should sail in closer. We might be able to capture it this turn. Uh, since we... He's the one that... The, since the Black Dragon is the one that's showing up here, 
I'm not going to hit it anymore with the uh, Maelstrom, just in case it changes the odds yet again. Well, 99.2. There we go. Stefner destroyed uh, Abashi the Black Dragon. Is that Abashi? It looks like Abashi, but oof, the font on the screen is so terrible I can't read it quite correctly. Okay, so at that point, I think we might actually be able to take the city in one turn now. Guybrush. Okay, we're going to heal him up. 99.1. Let's have Donald Loot here. 99.9. Get all these mages out. And all the arch mages. Pretty it's a pretty standard formula at this point, isn't it? But it's effective, so. Come on. Hasten all of them. I don't think it really matters what we promote for here anymore. Hopefully this entire mission will be over with relatively soon. It has dragged on for a bit, I think. Okay, let's sail the ships away so that we don't take any accidental collateral damage. What are the odds? 59? Well, we won. 39? Apparently those archers are pretty hot. 78? 33? 49? 33. Oops. I keep skipping turns on units because I assume they'll win. 34. 79. Still lost. 79. Finally won. 82. 82. 99. Yeah, he still has quite a few units in that city and he can obviously resupply it as well. So we might have to kill even more as time goes by. Not sure what they want me to do with that worker, but we're just going to automate it. What can we hit with this host that's not going to kill it? 96, 75, 93. This is the best we can do. Diseased corpse, huh? How, what are our odds against the Ampere? 66? Ooh, we won. Nice. Promote for city attack here. 80% odds. A lot of unexpected victories over here. He now has one skeleton, one imp. Two skeletons, one imp, and one mains defending that city. So who knows? Oh no. He hit me with this, the fireballs again. Because of course he did. Interestingly enough though, he has not refortified the city. Here we go. 98. 80% odds with that one. 92. We don't get city attack promotions for these, huh? We can only promote once. Maybe that's how it works. 97. He now has a ritualist in that city, though, in addition to an imp. So he's making it a bit more difficult to uh, attack it. Okay, well, I mean, he keeps hitting my ships here, but I don't think it damages the units inside. Sefner is ready to attack. Yeah, that uh, healing promotion. What was it? March? It really did come in handy. Let's sail in here. Okay, we've got two hosts that managed to survive. Should we throw them in right now? 70% odds and 84% odds. Let's bring the wrath down upon him yet again. Those are probably all fully damaged at this point. Oops. Okay, we can heal Donald Lu using our special building. Getting so close. I'm also going to spawn fireballs and then back out of here. Okay. 
Bombard defenses down. All fireballs attack. Wow, they actually won quite a bit. Wraith won. Wraith won again. And that's another one of his cities down. But he still has this one city up here left. So the question is, how will we be able to attack it? He does not have many units in it. 20, 30 versus city versus 20. For spell damage. I mean, these units can attack right now. But 0.1% odds for that one. Is, what? Why are these all... Why are these odds all so bad? I might just have to send Stefner in there. We'll see. I really would hate to have to sail all the way around this landmass. Just to get at his last city. You might just have to try to take out these stacks here and then... Oh, he has so many stacks. Why? Just random ass stacks standing on the place. Can we hit anything with these? No, not really. It's the closest we're going to get. Oh, wait. Here. These units can all move. Okay. I should maybe have promoted one of these for heal while moving. Now that I think about it. Because I can't ever pause to heal. So it would make sense. What about these units then? They're all the odds were all bad, I thought. 92% there. Yeah, it's like 0.1%. There's a very strong ritualist in that city. Okay, we can hit the skeleton there instead. I mean, these odds are better than the odds in the city, so let's hit that. And he has a ritualist for this city now, unfortunately. Oh, we've already attacked this turn, okay. There we go. Let's skip a turn here with the ships. I didn't even get to use Sefner, apparently. Alright. Guybrush has another promotion coming. What should we promote for? Probably defense. There we go. And next turn, we'll probably, probably land all of them. <clears throat> or at least take out one of these other stacks that are sitting around here. He's still hitting me with those stupid fireballs. Like, no matter what, he's dedicated to it. It's just a ritualist up there. It's a ritualist, a pyro zombie, and a mage. And two archers. Okay. Let's see what can be taken out here. A bit slow. The skeletons do make pretty exceptional targets. Because they are very cheap to attack, and they guarantee that my hosts will stay around for the next turn if I do attack. There, that's, that was a pretty nice cleanup job, I think. 25% odds, 43. Let's kill that Wraith, I guess. And I'm just going to move the rest of these hosts as close to the city as possible. Okay, what do we have? Ooh, he actually got rid of that Ritualist in the city. Only 50% odds though there. What? What is an Imp? I'm not exactly sure why the Imp is so powerful. It's just a magic unit. Still only 50% odds against it. 
Oh, and we won. There. Very nice. Banner. Raise the city. Okay, so we got the Infernal out of this area. I don't much care what happens next. Uh, he's too far away from me to bother me now, I think. Let's take a peek over here just to see. Yeah, so apparently... It's the rest of Highborn's lands. I don't think we have to worry about Highborn. Uh, so what do we have here? We've got one stack there. A small stack. I think we should remove... Try to get rid of this small stack of stuff here when we, when we land. Maybe. It's hard to say. We could definitely hit the stack here with the hosts. But we can't do any collateral damage, really. So let's just get everything off the ship. All mages cast hosts. And then they're getting back on the ship, and hopefully I can actually win some battles here. Unfortunately, Sefner can't move again, so the heroes are going to have to stay on this tile. Uh, both adepts get back on. And then let's sail out of here. So one of the things we probably want to do is try to take out that stack. He has some pretty good pirate zombies there. 31% odds. 12% odds. Should we hit it with something like Guybrush? 99% odds with Guybrush. Maybe we should just wipe out these units here with our hosts and then let them get more promotions next turn. Oh, even these. We do not have such hot odds against them. Like that was 47% odds, I think. But if we wipe these out, then we'll be getting some promotions next turn because of it. Not prom well, we will get promotions and we'll be able to move again. Oops. Oops. Oh, he has quite a nice little stack over here again, doesn't he? Yeah, look at all... So many skeletons. I, I mean, most of the stuff is just summons. So there's nothing too much to be worried about there. And we can kill them all pretty, pretty easily. Like that. But I can easily... I could see us getting distracted on this kind of stuff. What are the... 31% with the wraiths. 86. Let's hit that ritualist. We can't quite get there in one turn. Uh... Still 35% odds. 69%, okay. All of these hosts, I'm going to have them move forward. And then we're going to skip Guybrush and Donald Lou's turn. Continue bringing up the host. Uh, okay. So I think that's pretty much all we can do for this turn. Let me think here. Yeah, we're getting closer. I might want to sail the ship's route. Uh, I think for now we're just going to stay, skip a turn, stay here, and see what happens. Otherwise, we might have to sail the ships around to support them. Just move everything else forward here. Skip this turn, okay. Everybody just, can you calm down and skip a turn? Thank you. Okay, the host multiplies. Which is something it's been known to do. Oh, apparently he's sending this skirmish party off to do something else. So maybe we don't have to worry about it then. Uh, what should we do about these stacks here? That's a third combat promotion. 69% odds. Okay. 44. 65. 62. 78. 
66, 96. 72, 99. Hit those skeletons there for something. We don't have much of a choice here. 20% strength versus 30. Still, the odds are not in our favor there. We're just going to throw it at the city anyway, though, I guess. Because we can't hit any other unit. Oh, wait, we can hit this unit with it. And it died anyway. Okay, what else do we have left? Just one host. And it died. Let's advance our heroes here. Oh, there's, there's another host here as well. Okay. Stefaner, we don't have to worry about healing. So he's got heal while moving. It's going to take us two turns to reach the borders of that city. Which is pretty decent. Let's skip a turn for this unit. Most of these hosts have already attacked this turn. Hmm. So what do we want to do here with the ships? I don't think they can really assist us from this side of the island anymore unless we are actually willing to bring our mages in and have them walk. Maybe we should do that. Let's just unload everything. And then I'm going to lead the ships over here to heal. Okay, so here we go. And we can actually bring the mages along with the hero units. Okay, they will defend them for the most part, I think. Some fire damage. Nothing too significant, though. Okay. Let's move into position. Probably the best thing we can do at this point. Let's see. Let's just wipe all that out. Just kind of ignore everything, I guess. I'm going to use the maelstroms from the mages. If I can find the, the mages that actually have the ability to use the maelstrom. Apparently I can't. Where on earth is the other one? Should be one more maelstrom. Is this it? Okay. Down to archers. We should be able to take it this turn. All units of the same type, cast, host, and attack. Okay, apparently he moved an entire stack in there, huh? Because it ha I haven't taken the city. Time for Sefner. He's got a mage. Come on, Guybrush, you can do it. One mage left. And I'm out of units. What are the odds? There we go. Oh, okay, here we go. The ending scenario for it. Very nice. There was a celebration that would make Pepin Perpentok himself jealous. When Tiberian died, the Black Tower collapsed around him. Many wondered if he survived the attack until they noticed the corruption of the land begin to heal as did the injured men. Everywhere men of various nations drank, sung, and for the first time in months, relaxed. Valmar grabbed a bottle of rare Svaltfar wine and went to find Rana. The war kept them both so busy he hadn't seen her for weeks, and he found her himself almost as excited to see her as he was to defeat the Shi'am. He found her in a small group of her captains, along with a hippus messenger that Valmar didn't recognize. Expecting cheers from the group, Falmar stopped when he noticed they spoke in hushed, somber tones, even while the rest of the army celebrated among them. Even Rana's dark eyes were swollen and red. She had been crying, but there were no tears now, only anger and determination. Is everything all right? Falmar asked. He set the wine down as it felt inappropriate to stand there dumbly holding it. The captains quieted. They saluted Falmar but didn't answer the question. Rana gave Falmar a weary smile. 
She was happy to see him and felt somehow relieved to have him close despite the recent news. Dasunki is the head of the Aral Hippie, the most powerful Hippus clan. He is, he was, as close as we have to a king. She paused here. Thalmar knew who Tasuki was. She had spoken frequently of him with both frustration and admi admiration. But even outside of Ruana's tales, there weren't many in Erebus who hadn't heard of the mercenary king of the Hippus. The Ilians are rising in the north, Ruana continued, and they hired Tasuki to fight for them. When they were finished with him, they killed him and turned on the Arrow Hippie. There are a fragile few that were able to escape the purge. So and so is gone, our people are slaughtered, and the only armies that remain are those that fought here. Falmar sat down beside Roana. The captain's faces were stern, but it was obvious they had been arguing the next steps. Despite their great respect for Falmar, they considered this a hippus matter and weren't willing to involve him unless Roana did. But Falmar could guess the points of the argument. Some of them wanted to seek revenge and attack the aliens, and the others wanted to withdraw into lands that were safe and rebuild. The fate of the Hippus and Lanan are intertwined. You have our strength and friendship if you desire it. Even if we sail against the aliens, Roano asked, we have reports that their leader means to resurrect the god of winter and can cast us into a turn. And can I, that sounds a bit repetitive, but never mind. And can cast us into a, eternal winter. They prepare now for the ritual. Would you be so quick to jump from the fires of the Shim to the freezing winds of the aliens? Felimar thought about it. He hadn't expected another war, and he knew his men had more than earned their rest. They would be remembered for generations for what they had accomplished here. How could he ask them to exchange that for another desperate war? Rana knew he would join her when he saw his crooked smile. That depends, Felimar asked. Would we get to share a flagship again? So there, that completes the Black Tower scenario for uh, Fall from Heaven 2. Uh, this also completes the Falimar campaign, as I like to call it, which is a series of four different episodes that are all focused around, uh, you know, Fal Falimar's ad adventures or misadventures, depending upon how you see it. Uh, but that does pretty much complete the the Falimar campaign. I'm not exactly sure where I'll go from here, if I'll continue to do Fall from Heaven 2 coverage or not, so I guess up until that point, the only thing I can say is thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Oh, let's just, let's just raise this city. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and play through this. I had forgotten about that this was waiting for me yet. So you can see me expanding onto this mainland. Yeah, there really weren't that many civilizations here. And once I started wiping them out, they, they didn't expand very frequently. There you can see, time spent 12 hours and 7 minutes, wow. Even for a campaign as simple as this, it still took 12 hours for me to complete it. Here you can see the power, everyone drops off, but yours truly and Hyborum. But the Hyborum wasn't defeated either. Production, like here's the thing with production, I've never seen a situation where the AI was able to outclass the human player in terms of production. And food is like, once again, just out the wazoo. Same thing with gold. I should have played it on a harder difficulty. I played it on, I think, what was it, Monarch? It was like two difficulties above the default difficulty, but I think on second thought I could have actually completed this on Emperor at the very least. Would have made it a little bit longer and more tedious though, so maybe this was the correct way to go about doing it. Okay, so there you go, end of history. Once again, thank you very much for watching, as always, and I hope to see you next time.